Hey, YouTube friends and family. How's everybody doing? I hope you're all doing great. You know, we just had, um, in fact, this is the day after. Well, no. Yesterday was the day after the boycott. So today is the day after the uh, day after the boycott. Today is the 23rd. And the boycott America Corporation was on the 21st. It was a great time of reflection and soul searching. And here I'm going to share with you how it went. That morning, or that night, I should, night before. Anyway, I looked up at the clock and it was one minute before midnight on the 20th of June. A burst of excitement hit me as I realized that the Boycott America Corporation was finally beginning. I quickly logged out of my YouTube and my browser, clicked the start button, then went to shut down. The We the People sample of power was beginning. The plan in our home had been discussed with not just the adults, my hubby Hammer, my mama, and our adult son, and myself, but the children also. I mean, after all, this is their world too, and what affects us affects them. The plan began with a general list. No TV, no computers, no phone, no radio, no shopping, no driving, no spending of any kind, no banking, etc., etc. It was agreed upon that every member in our household would be convicted to and follow the plan to the T. I staggered up the stairs, fumbling for the light switch that turned the stairwell lights off, and down the hall I went, headed for my bed, a cozy, comfy bed where I would rest for the big day that was soon to be upon us. Not unlike the anxious anticipation one might feel the night before school prom, or perhaps a weekend camping trip, where all the plans are made and the supplies readied. Ch list are checked and checked twice, the okay in place, and now the wait. I could hear the clock in the hall as it ticked the seconds, sixty, then a minute, over and over, tick, tick, tick. Yes, I could hear it clearly, and as the seconds passed, I actually thought that the clock's volume had been turned up by some unseen force. It was as if my senses became more aware of time. I began to think of time, past the months, the years that had been and were no more. I locked in on Fukushima the morning that the news filled, was filled with alerts, a 9.1 earthquake, the tsunami. The pictures began to rain in on my thoughts, then turning into hail, thumping at my memory of that day, the pain I felt for all my brothers and sisters in Japan. I remembered it as if it was yesterday, as clear as it could be. I stepped forward into the day that followed, the warnings about the radiation that spewed from the nuclear reactors. I paused, sitting up in bed, I reached for the window and pulled it open. I spoke loudly. I love you all. Hoping the message would travel to Japan. It had been a while since I sent that message. A message that I sent twice or more daily when the disaster first struck. Why was it that I stopped, I wondered. Sitting there in the dark listening to the ticking, my memory stepped forward again, one step, 
Ah, yes, I remember. The checker at the store had told me that YouTube had videos of people in Japan showing the devastation. And there was much more to it than we were seeing on the news medias on TV. So when I got home and after the children were in bed, I went into YouTube. I began searching videos out pertaining to the Japan earthquake and the aftermath of the tsunami. I was shocked at what I was seeing. Videos showing the ground moving, the water coming up under the concrete, the asphalt, the buildings. I tried to leave comments. However, I was restricted because I had no YouTube account. So I created one. And from there, Zanzibar was born, warning people not to eat the tuna, along with many comments. I began, or I became, a YouTuber. I shook my head and attempted to go to sleep, to no avail. My mind reeled through videos of warnings about the radiation in our air, the fallout. People with Geiger counters, some even traveling for the readings, mapping the alarming counts and warning, warnings to the public. After all, Though our president had promised on national TV to keep us informed, that proved to be another misleading statement. It did not happen. The only way it seemed for us to get the truth was through people like Nibiru Magic, Rad Chick, Miss Milky the Clown, and Dutch Sense, keeping us informed. The information poured in daily. From there, I began to hear about GMOs in our foods, the chemtrails in our skies, the reptilians living under the White House, common LNN, going to hit Earth, asteroid, asteroid YU-55, might take Earth out, Nibiru on its way, and aliens and falling angel, fallen angels taking over. I heard about the corruption in government, the fracking, and the pollution in our waterways. Like a newborn baby learning to walk, I was being filled with information. Here, this way, that way, real disinformation, corruption, deception, on and on. Each news story meant that I would have to do my own research. I mean, I needed to know more and more and know for sure without doubt that whatever it was, was true or not. How else would I know? I looked at the clock on the dresser. It was now 3.11 a.m. No problem, I thought to myself. Tomorrow is do-nothing day. Boycott America Corporation. I can sleep in. Back to my thoughts as I peered out at the moon. Oh yeah, the fake moon. The moon that I see is not supposed to be real. Or so many say. Videos galore. And so many terrifying or mind-altering or world-shattering things that I did not know. Even like the pole shift and the earth tipping. You know what I mean. All the abnormal, life-changing, world-altering things I had never heard of. Was YouTube a blessing or was it a curse? I mean, it frightened me some of the stories I heard, some of the pictures painted in my mind absolutely frightening. I often found myself wondering why I was watching these things. I mean, who in the world would want to know all this stuff? Being a person, a spirit of love, my heart was breaking. I could not even go outside without wanting to cry. 
I would look out at my beautiful world, the animals big and small, the children playing, breathing in the air, soaking themselves in radiation, and trees dying, bees dying, oh my God! I was becoming broken, scarred, made into an invalid, a cripple, no longer a person who felt safe and happy, the woman who spent countless hours and years making other people laugh and feel secure, was now feeling very insecure herself. There had to be a line, a line of sanity. That was the past two years, my YouTube life, had kind of created a division between who I am and what I was hearing and believing. In that time, I spent many hours wasted on concern and worry about the world's problems and disasters. I even became fearful of things I could not change were they to happen. Many of the things I worried about did not happen, and many more yet may not happen. I listened to the crickets and stopped listening to the clock and finally the Sandman made his way in and I found peace in my slumber, my hours to dream, my sanctuary. I rose at 9.23 a.m. Hammer was not in bed. He had already made our coffee and was sitting on the deck, where I joined him. The hummingbirds were dining. Looking out, I saw the yard, and bird feeders were full of robins, sparrows, finches, doves, and yes, a pair of pigeons. I kissed my husband and said good morning. Our boycott was in full force. Our day would be a bond with nature our garden, story time with the children and mama, dehydrating foods, cooking, and just visiting. Listening to the silence was even pleasurable. The children swam in the pool, and Hammer, one of our adult sons, and I sat on the deck, watching the planes, the sky, the wildlife, and yes, the trees dancing in the breeze. It was about 6 o'clock p.m. when I decided to lie down for a little nap. I went to our bedroom to lay down. As I sat on the edge of the bed, I looked out our bedroom window at the two majestic walnut trees, taking note of the brand new limbs and leaves that it had appeared in just the last few days. I watched as the squirrels raced around the branches. On the taller tree at the top was a black raven or crow singing out to the world, all is good, all is good, all is good. Suddenly it hit me like a bolt of lightning. There would be no nap. I was thrown into the bonding, a meshing, if you will, with the innermost thoughts within my mind, thoughts that felt more like memories, pages that were stuffed back in some dusty drawer, awaiting a moment, the of air, where the dust would be dispersed and the page seen clearly, almost as if I had known all along. I saw my world in a different light than the light that I had been dancing under, choreographed, mapped, and reasoned out some time long ago, perhaps before I had entered this room I call my now, our present. Like a breath of fresh air, my vision opened. I read the thoughts and smile, a smile adorned my face. The world is a forever, a given, 
a constant. It will not be destroyed, though the inhabitants might be the destroyers of themselves. It is the power of the people, as I have always believed, always known. Yes, the power of the people that will the entire destiny of all, the collective, the altogether teamwork. Sitting on the deck, Michael and I had willed many clouds to disappear, like we had seen in videos, just by telling them to leave. We witnessed in awe at the power of our words. No coincidental issue. No, it wasn't coincidental, as some would think. Rather, chosen. We chose which clouds to dismiss, and they did. The power of the collective thought. We knew this. We all knew this when we came here. All people knew this. However, for whatever reason, our memories of what this life is all about seems to have been sealed in drawers collecting dust deep within our own beings. As I became more aware of the structure of my world around me, sitting on the edge of my bed, peering out the window in a near meditative state, I saw truth. I saw that we have had the power to change anything and all things by the gift of free will. Yes, a gift given to us by our universal creator, by God himself. The world we see is, in fact, changed, altered, rearranged, and styled by the collection of our thoughts. A collection of thoughts. Like the architectural blueprints drawn up by the collective minds. The very thing that many people say, yet few even grasp as fact, as reality. The gift of free will. The more people thinking the same thing, the more likely that those things will come to be. They will happen. It will not work to fight in wars and killing of the enemy, that won't work. There will only follow yet another war, as long as the blueprint is laid in the design of war. Marches and protest are, in a sense, people attempting to all work from the same page in order to correct a wrong or wrongs against the people, animals, or Mother Earth. Though, they do not carry with them enough power. Obvious to me today that this is because far too many people really cannot walk and chew bubblegum at the same time. The mindsets and the thoughts must work in unison with the collective. Many, many people thinking the same pattern, the same words, not unlike the chants of great teachers, of wisdom, of great healers. We can not change the corruption in this world until we change the way we see the world and will our world to be. Yes, the way we will our world to be. A phrase shared with me as a child so long ago, 
careful what you wish for, Ray, as you might get the wishes you create. The fears, the worries, a complete waste of time. I know this to be true. We, the people, do have the power. It lives in our free will. Think of the word will, my friends. The mental faculty by which one deliberately chooses or decides upon a course of action. Championed freedom of will against a doctrine of predetermination. Diligent purposefulness determination our will can it be that our world has deteriorated because or by the will of the inhabitants as we began to focus on the crimes the wars the differences the oddities our fears our weaknesses and let us not forget focusing on the purposeful ill-biddings of the dark side, the evil ones, who through many means work to create the very separation and division of the people, which will in fact and does prevent our collective thinking, our being on the same page, with good for all being what we will to happen. Think about this. The time is now for you to put this test yourself. Yes, you to put this to the test. A simple test that several people have shown us in videos. Go outside, look into the sky, pick any small cloud, and I say small because the larger ones take a bit more time. Tell the cloud to leave your sky. Just randomly pick any cloud. Demand that it leave. Chant this. Leave my sky. Or get out of here. Whatever your chant may be. Chant it. Command it. Tell the cloud to leave. Watch the cloud dissipate and dissolve into nothing, leaving your blue sky in its place. Now try this with two people saying the same thing and watch as the cloud leaves much faster. Could it be this simple? That all we have to do is use our God-given gift of free will to bring back the sanity in our world. Has this message been sitting right in front of us all along? God gave us free will to use. What about moving a mountain with the faith of a mustard seed? Friends, I think we've missed the message. I personally know this is true. It, it is up to us. We just need to will the good back. The love for all. The balance. To do this, we must all get on the same page. We must chant the same chant. We must mean the same thing. Much love. To all of you, my friends, and what a day it was. Many more better tomorrows. I love you all. Great big hugs. Catch you guys later.